There are a number of ways to control multiple LEDs with limited pins on the Arduino. All of them require some additional components such as shift registers or multiplexers. Charlie Plexing is an ingenious electronic hack that allows you to achieve the same without any additional hardware. This idea exploits the fact that LEDs like all other diodes conduct only in one direction. We can connect two LEDs with oppositely oriented polarities to two pins on the Arduino. Depending on which LED we want to light up, we can set the pins high or low accordingly. Let's extend this idea by adding one more pin to the circuit. In fact, we can attach two more LEDs between the first and the third pin. However, there's one problem with this idea. No matter which LED we try to light up, by setting two pins to high and low respectively, another unwanted LED turns on, depending on the state of the third pin. To solve this problem, all we have to do is set that pin as an input pin. This puts the unused pin to a high impedance state, or in other words, the pin acts as an open circuit. So it's as good as saying, that the trouble causing pin is no longer connected to the circuit. Equipped with this idea, we can control every LED in the circuit. Well, what about the resistors? If we have a 5V supply from the Arduino, we use a 330 ohm resistor to limit the current. In Charlie Texting 2, although the circuit could look a bit intimidating, essentially every LED is still controlled by two pins. So all we have to do is split the resistance value into two parts. Let's approximate this to two 150 ohm resistors. And so, every LED that lights up effectively encounters 300 ohms of resistance. That's a lot of talking. Let's test out a simple circuit. Here's a simple code I wrote to implement Charlie Pixing without a library. I started by creating three variables, one for each pin, and a variable to show the delay time. Leave the setup empty, and inside the loop, the first three lines decide which pin is going to act as an input and which one is going to be an output. Each of the outputs is assigned a state, either high or low, depending on which LED has to be turned on. We wait for a short amount of time before we move on to the next LED. And then I copy pasted this code six times to include each LED. That was all for the code. The code worked perfectly, and by reducing the delay time, we could make it appear as if all the LEDs were going simultaneously. We can control n square minus n LEDs with just n pins from the microcontroller. But the circuit could become really messy and confusing with more than 3 pins. All in all, it's a great trick to incorporate when you're designing a custom PCB or don't want to add additional hardware to your project. If you learned something new today, do let me know by leaving a comment below or liking the video.